Thank you for staying. Now, we have in the studio joining us for this newspaper review, uh, Jonathan Onoja, who is also a security expert that will be uh, giving us perspectives on some of the stories on our front page. Thank you for joining us on Daybreak this morning. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Now, uh, quite a number of stories uh, and interesting, interesting ones at that. Uh, the Daily Trust newspaper uh, this morning leads with the story that says Section 84, Subsection 12, 53 commissioners, others resign in state as Buhari's ministers stay put. Ngige declares for presidency today. It's against the law to remain in office. And that's Fage. And no big deal, uh, Kari is saying. Uh, below that, you would see police uh, probe alleged rape of 10-year-old Lagos Christland school pupil. Uh, you'd find details of that on page 36. Why FG is to deploy to Kano Jets, is yet to deploy super to Kano Jets uh, to Northwest, uh, presidency is saying. Uh, you have other stories there. Saul Luget's GAC is not for second term. Kidnapped Kano Bisman found dead in Kogi after 6 million naira. Around some other stories at the top, how unruly fans mad Kano Pillars homecoming. ISWAP fighters attack security checkpoint, kill two in Medugri. These are some of the stories uh, on the front page of Daily Trust this morning. Now, uh, quite interesting stories, really. We recently had this interview uh, with the spokesperson of the president where he was given reasons why uh, the to Kano jets are yet to be deployed to uh, the Northwest. And it's quite surprising that, I mean, we have, the, these bandits have been declared as terrorists, isn't it? Initially, the you know, explanation was that the Super Tucano jets were bought based on an agreement that it can only be deployed, you know, to fight terrorists and all of that. And now that uh, the bandits, you know, whom analysts have said, well, they are all the same, uh, why don't we just, you know, deploy these super tucanos to the northeast? And we've had all kinds of explanations. Are you comfortable with the explanations that have been given so far? Well, um, different explanations from different quarters, but most times they will target the presidency. You know, we are in a country that even an office assistant can just publish something, and the next thing you see is the presidency. Mm. Uh, it flows in this administration. Mm -hmm. You know, this time though, we are hearing it from the president's uh, publicity. Well, uh, um, advice we have actually yeah. been seeing that happening before. Sometimes somebody make a statement, but that is not a contest here. Yeah. The use of the Tucano jets, or the essence for the purchase of the Tucano the jets, has been defeated. Agree with me? Why the essence that? for that has been defeated. <clears throat> you know why? You have something that you don't have. The, the, you, are, you are not independent on the usage of it. Before the Tukano jet was brought, there were agreements before it was released to Nigeria. They say you have to use it, when to use it, and even how to use it. So when you are given this, you know, this um, understanding that you can't use it outside the context for which you agree with them, then there is no independence or there is no uh, will there will be no will to use it you are very very cautious of how to use these things ordinarily ordinarily we shouldn't have waited to we get it to kind jet before we strike ordinarily we shouldn't be told on how to use this telling me how to use it is equally making me handicap because mm -hmm. how to use it we not, shouldn't be determined by how we agreed. It should be determined by what is on ground mm -hmm. or the situation, the reality that is befacing me that I will not have to use my discretion how to use it and when to use it. But if your how to use it conflicts with my when and how to use it, mm -hmm. it does not function. Mm -hmm. I am telling you, the U.S. will tell you that for you to have the Tucano jets, um, you cannot use it... Um, in the mix of the people or depending on how it works. But you see, our crime situation here is different from what the U.S. have. We have terrorism, actually. But then we have understanding that these guys are concentrated where even where the natives are, too. So we have intelligence in those places that 
Um, you cannot even strike the whole community because a terrorist is in there, and you want to want strike. You want to strike everybody because um, you want to kill one single soul. It does not work with international um, law. So how are you going to use a Tucano jet for a case that you, try, you should just use your intelligence and hand pick those individuals? Mm -hmm. You went and get the whole Tucano jet to fight war. Mm -hmm. are, we, are we fighting the war with our people? You want to just you want to get a definite situations. You want to get into a definite situations is to have a definite intelligence mm -hmm. that you can use to mitigate the challenges. Just go strike and withdraw. So you don't need to get the whole to Kano jet mm. to fight. So in the, maybe in the, would you say that the whole concept of getting this to Kano jet has is been overrated? Defeated. Has been defeated. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have gone for to Kano jet. And even when we bought it to Kano jet and we see that there's failure in it, excuses start coming. Oh, why we cannot use it is because, like you said, they are not branded terrorists. We will need them to be called terrorists before we can use it. Mm -hmm. Then I asked the question. Would you have actually need them, needed the court to pronounce them terrorists mm. before they invaded your quarters in NDA? Okay, now uh, the, the governor of uh, Kaduna State has made reference about you know, the, the strategy that we are using you know, in fighting these bandits. He was uh, the other time suggesting that there should be some kind of a simultaneous bombardment of the camps of right. you know, these terrorists across the board in the different uh, north western states instead of the current approach where you know they are being chased out of a certain you know location and then they move to another mm -hmm. and so it goes on like that like a rat race uh, so uh, would you say that you know in that sense these Tucano jets would have come in handy if that approach was to be taken no I think what he meant to say is um, the best way to attack or uh, the best way to defense is by attack you know, what our people do, what our security agencies are doing today is that there's no consistency. Today, they will attack and then they relax. They don't follow up in their attacks. So what he's trying to say in essence is follow it to the latter. When you are crushing no, but them... but he specifically talked about bombing the camps. Bombing so. those camps are... Those camps that are known. For instance, Sambisa Forest. But are you, will you agree with me that even around the Sambisa Forest, there are human beings, there are natives that live around. Mm. The Sambisa Forest is not an isolated deep. So, so then so some have said nobody that, can then so some have go said there that, again. Some have said that in every war, you know, there are collateral damages. And, and in this instance, you know, if civilians are caught up in all of this, in then maybe... In this instance, it's for that reason that the U.S. knew very well the mentality of Africa. When it said, when you now talked about uh, there are going to be collateral um, Damage. uh, damages, he understand the context that the Africa collateral damage is not just about fighting the terrorists and maybe in the process sustaining some persons or uh, some persons sustaining injuries. No. The kind of collateral damage they are is like the one they had going to Adama, Adama, to go and strike and they end up killing the whole community. Do you understand it? Killing the whole community in the name of fighting bandits. And at the end of the day, bandits were not found there. They killed innocent people. So it's not just about striking, because what we find ourselves now, I cannot just come to this studio and I want to get somebody, and only in the name of getting somebody, I kill the whole people. And most times the person will even escape. So we are not saying that this, this statement is wrong. Mm. But the context in which I feel he's putting it is that when you find that they are there, follow them to the latter, get them. Mr. Noja, you said that the aim of getting the Tucano jets have been defeated. I'd like to know, is there no other way out? Because, I mean, we have them, and uh, they can't just go to waste like that, right? Well, we have them. It's not an asset. Yes. It's an asset, so right? So can they be deployed so that we can make some uh, We haven't reached, successes? we have not gotten to that level. Nigeria has not gotten to that level. Are you me? We have not gotten to that level where the Tucano jet should be deployed yet. We haven't? We haven't. Because, you know why? All that is happening, right? we, we haven't. No, no, I am coming. I am coming. We have not been able to map out the strategic camps of those individuals. Even though, like you see, the Islamic uh, scholar, scholars came and said, they know where they are. They know where they are because they meet them in the bush, they know everything, and they know their locations. Are you in me? That I, they, I think there's no doubt about their that, location. They, they, they know where they uh, are. So if we have known the locations, we expect our security agencies by now 
to map out strategies. And then I'm bringing it to dashboard and tell Nigerians. Like you see today, my brother, if you go around the city centers, any day they want to come and do their shooting, they want to warm the air, they want to do this. You see some even a lot, you see some messages on your phone that please don't be don't be panic. Um, these things to be calm. There are going to be some kind of you know sporadic shooting somewhere like this, like this. It is we are involved. We know what we are doing. They give you this kind of what message so that you'll be abreast that this is what is happening. So have they been able to let you know the same people sending those messages, those um, network providers that they're using send those messages to you? Is there any day they send you those messages that um, along Kaduna um, Aziz or Kaduna Abuja Aziz, today uh, there's going to be a problem like this, there's going to be a problem like this, so please stop it. We are going to be on the situation, top of the situation around those Aziz. If you come and you see military or this and that, don't, don't be panicked. Did you have this intelligence report? So we have not been able to map out the strategic areas where this Tucano jet has to be used first. We cannot just, in the name of Tucano jet, carry Tucano jet, just begin to drive, begin to fly everywhere because we want to keep bandits. We have not been able to map out their camps. They should be able to map out their camps. Then they will diagnose it. Who are those around those areas? Are they able to evacuate victims, innocent Nigerians from those areas? Government are not looking at that yet. Well, mm -hmm. Mr. Onodja, if government were to go to those areas and start evacuating uh, civilians, innocent civilians, wouldn't that give a heads up to the bandits who are around there and then they will leave? No, but that's what is happening today. We have come to the propaganda of the media that, um, you see, before an operation is uh, being, um, being carried out, is announced. That's the level of ourselves, yes. Before... The, before the military or even the police do any operations today, they have lost their sense of intelligence. But you see what the guys are doing, those bad guys are doing, they will strike and give you the response. They will strike first and then give you response. But we will want to go and give them response before we strike. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can, they can intelligently, intelligently evacuate people living around those areas that they don't need to open up to people, why they are evacuating them? They can actually say they are living in a, in a, in a, you know in a in a bad zones, in the red zones, and the military have to take over. Have we not advised that the military should take over the camps of where these people are are, are, are now staying? Mr. Anoja, you also know that these bandits live amongst the people, so I, I don't know how it's possible for the military to go in and take out those people without them actually getting this information. That is, that is the intelligence that they will need to deploy. And it's for that reason I told you earlier that the essence of the Tucano jet has been defeated. You can't be using the Tucano jet at the expense of Nigerians, the lives of Nigerians. Because like you just said now, you cannot just go and strike a whole community because you want to get a single soul out. So what do we now need? What do we need have to do? That's what we call preventative diplomacy. We have to go in there, dialogue with those indigenous, go to where the natives are concentrated, discuss with them, know exactly their thoughts. And from there, that is why I see the sense of intelligence gathering is lost. We must come to understand that it was it is the same natives that can tell us that, see, we have this brother who does not go anywhere. People come to visit him by so-so and so-so. We have this brother who actually used to carry gun around. Or people, he goes and people come to pick him in a vehicle. We have this brother that buy fuels and then in the night, it's only when he will put his, the fuel we fly. So it is these natives that can tell you exactly. Those landlords that know exactly what the tenants do can tell that this mm. is this man that is a suspect. So, so now, uh, we, let's take a look at The Guardian now. And uh, I'm coming back to this uh, point you just raised. On The Guardian, we have uh, other stories that talks about uh, you know, investors want more slice of uh, 13.76 trillion Naira pension assets in stocks. Uh, but there are also other stories uh, related to where, you know, we stopped uh, our conversation talking about uh, the chief of army staff uh, seeking a whole of society approach uh, to curb insecurity. And then you also have uh, other stories. It says terrorists gives Zamfara government 14 days to pay 30 million Naira for killing wife uh, and two others. And that's uh, one story there uh, on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Now, if you look at that, uh, the, the call by the chief of army staff for a whole society approach, you know, on all of this. We always talk about the need for information sharing, uh, but you need collaboration 
between the citizens and the security personnel to have that kind of you know, information, isn't it? Where you, citizens are willing uh, to tell you, okay, these are the kind of movements that we have observed. Uh, these are the kind of faces, new people that we are observing in our community. Uh, the, the citizens must be able to feel safe doing that, isn't it? Do we have that at the moment? For us to achieve that goal, one other thing that we must look at first, it's not just about giving out the statement, it's the will behind the statement. Now, and for us to achieve this goal, like I said, we must um, decentralize the extant centralized security architecture. Are you in me? Uh, where the citizens or the natives can easily transfer primary data to security agencies. And it's for that reason, like sometimes I advocated that the, the, the civil defense, because of the, uh, the kind of jobs they involve, in, they involve themselves in, they should give the Nigerian Peace Corps an opportunity. Where they will now serve as a primary agent, transferring or collecting this data to uh, um, state police or whatever names they are going to call them, so that they can act effectively. You don't expect somebody in a local area who have this intelligence before it will get to, you know, the state's command, get to this, get to that. He's, he's also, or he, he or she is also very afraid that if I give this information, I don't even know who I'm giving this information to. They may end up killing me if I say this or I say that. Because of what? There's no trust within the security agencies anymore. So for us to achieve that, we must first regain the trust. They must first regain the trust of Nigerians. And since they cannot regain it a day or to this program, one other way again is to decentralize security architecture. Like the government is saying they want to uh, reform the uh, existing security architecture. One of the things they have to do is to decentralize our overbearing centralized security architecture that is failing, that cannot mitigate the current challenges. And to do that, how are you going to do that? I have often advised and equally argued that security is in cycles. And for you to achieve results, you need actors within each of the cycles to, that are well attuned to concentrate and mitigate the security challenges. So we will need the locals uh -huh. who are readily on ground to combine them uh, their, their, their intelligence arsenals with these guys Okay, to, now, to, to now, give this uh, in, in intelligence. Doing that, in doing that, do we need do, you know, to kind of maybe formally embed some of these uh, community people uh, into the services? Mm. You that, know? That, 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 that's, that's my point. That's you know, my point. They, they may not be uniform carrying body, or personnel persons, but, you know, and, and all that, but somehow they're just embedded somewhere and then they're scattered around all mm. over the place. You know, you've heard about the Civilian uh, Joint Tax Force. You have about, you heard about it. You know, we had civilians have uh, meetings with those guys and they do that. But far from that, what they need to do, like I said, why did I use the Peace Corps of Nigeria, which the B have just been passed by the Senate, is that in each of this local government or in each of the states, they have commands. And in each of these commands, they have their, you know, their personnel that they can deploy to each of these um, um, uh, districts, that they can collect those data. Their job, the job now will just collect this data because those that are living there, you cannot carry somebody from Abuja and say go to Ogo State. You don't, you, you cannot have the details of Ogo State compared to the man who have been, who have been there. So you now use those guys who are there to transfer those intelligence from you. Now Ogun, what is happening today in this local government? What is happening today? Because they are the natives. They understand exactly what is happening. And that's why I suggested that they should use the Nigerian Peace Corps for, to, achieve that, to, to achieve that. If you cannot employ all the community, all the indigenous, what are you now going to do? You use the available tools of getting those informations, those primary data, so they cannot give to the police. And again, it is going to be far from the national or uh, the centralized system of government to, of um, security system we have now, you must bring it to bear that we must have understanding of what we call the state policing and the community policing. While those guys are in charge of doing the job of the community policing, the state policing need to respond rapidly because you cannot carry intelligence, give to somebody, and it's waiting for uh, an order from Abuja. 
waiting for an order from exactly, Mogadishu. Which is another issue again. So you not you need to decentralize this instant centralized system. So that would you say that that is partly maybe responsible for the delay the in response, response that we see sometimes? Thank you. It is that that is a cause of the delay in response, and at the same time the mindset of the individual about a particular place, a region, or religion. Are you in me? Mm. It's part, it, a mindset of the old guy, in, in quote, about a particular region, religion, and about the people. Because look at it. There was a time we were told that the IG was to report in Benue State. You and I, we, got, we get to know that. He never reported. And the only thing that the president could tell us is that he's not aware that the IG did not report. So there is no follow-up. You can see the gap. The loopholes. Do you think that probably politics is also part of the know. reasons why we do not see such, you know, quick response mm. in terms of where there is, you know, distress call and on all of that. I've actually put it in single ter in the simple terms. So I, I wouldn't want to say politics because you know the country we are today. But I've just put it in simple terms that the what the will, the will behind the order, whether the person is willing to do or not, because maybe of the region. Or the religion. I don't want to bring because of our politics into it again because it, the politics have told Nigerians into different things okay. and we can't go for okay. that with politics. Uh, Mr. Onodja, still on the Guardian newspaper, as a security expert, I'd like to ask you a question. There's a story there that says terrorists give Zamfara government 14 days to pay three, 30 million for killing wife and two others. Now, what's, what is making a terrorist? Why why, in your opinion, why are these terrorists so bold? Why does he think he can give the government an ultimatum? How did we get here? Yes. Um, some questions like this have come. How did we get here? Are you in me? Um, I will start from there. How did we get here? We got here when we politicized our security chief's appointment. We got to where we are. We are religion, political affiliations, and all of that. Ethnicity become a reason for appointment. We got to this place because of the weak uh, security architectures we have. We got to this place because of the, 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 the lack of strategies by our security chiefs. We got to this place because of corruption, systemic and political corruption in the same security industry we found ourselves. It has become a business. Have you forgotten the other day in the House of Reps, they say, oh, we raised almost 400 something billion for uh, the security, the army alone, and nothing is done. So we have, um, you know, we have ever enjoined insecurity so much that it has become a business. We have enjoyed, you see, I'm, I am very, I'm, I'm a nationalist. I'm very realist. I'm, I'm a realist. You Let see, me tell you something. You, you say enjoy. We have enjoyed this, yes. Are we enjoying it? No, as for the, for the Nigerian populace, they're not enjoying it. I am talking about those in authority. They have enjoyed insecurity so much, the process of insecurity so much, that ending it is a problem. Ending it becomes a disease. That if there's no budgeting for insecurity, we are not budgeting for security, are you me? I hope you understand we're not budgeting for security. Whatever we are budgeting is for insecurity. The budgeting we have in this country today is not for insecurity, it's not for security. No. In the face of Nigeria, they say it's security. No. What we are budgeting for, we are budgeting for insecurity. Because how, security, how? No, I'm, I'm going to explain it to you. Security is a solution. Are you in me? Insecurity is a problem. So are we budgeting for the problem? Or we have been budgeting for, no, no, no. We have been budgeting for the problem because every year in there, we see the allocations of the military, whatever that comes, the appropriation, growing up. Because they felt that the challenges is becoming much. And so the higher it goes, the, 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 it's, not, it's not the lower it comes again. It is the higher it goes, the higher it, it, it goes with the, in terms of the, the, the budgeting. So we are not now, is it, an, uh, we call it an osmotic uh, 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 analysis. Now, the higher the money goes, the higher the problems grow. Mm. So we, so we, that's what we call cobra effect. Mm. Are you me? We call it cobra effect in security. In your attempt to solve the problem, you are creating the problem. Mm. So what mm. do we do now? This looks like a dilemma. I mean, yeah. do, and we do have, we not, okay, and, we, and it's for that reason that the, the, the Nigerians, have you forgotten? It's for that reason. Nigerians perceived 
that their intelligence have been overused. Nigeria has perceived that this is no longer a fight for a just cause. It is for individuals. This money is for individuals' pocket. And they protested years back and they said it is time to remove security heads, the, chiefs, the service chiefs. Okay. Are you me? We, right. we forgot when they, when they protested. Mm. They said, no, we have to remove the service chiefs. Right. And it took the government years before okay. that was. Okay, was now uh, we will continue in, with this uh, line of 